आज हेलो नमस्कार मैं सर महेश प्रसाद फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ फिजिक्स एज यू नो वेल डियर स्टूडेंट्स वी आर इन द चैप्टर दैट इज नथिंग बट मैकेनिकल प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ फ्लूइड राइट सो फॉर वी हैव डिस्कस्ड मेनी कांसेप्ट अंडर दिस पर्टिकुलर अंडर दिस पर्टिकुलर चैप्टर लाइक वी हैव सैंड अप विद अ टॉपिक लाइक बेसिक फार्मूला ऑफ प्रेशर एंड वी हैव गॉट एटमॉस्फेरिक प्रेशर then we have discussed about uh, bernoulli's theorem and the stokes law and uh, what exactly the viscous force and this uh, by having this particular concept in our mind today we'll discuss uh, uh reynolds number reynolds number in the sense uh, so far we have discussed uh, the, the there are different types of uh, flow of a li liquid we can have right like a streamlined flow turbulent flow so these are the different types of fluid we can have and the thing is how do you say that the fluid is streamlined or turbulent there should be some certain things to indicate the fluid is streamlined right so by having this particular uh, relation of uh, reynolds number reynolds was a scientist which is given by one the relation that is nothing but m r which is equal to we can have v into rho into d divided by It is eta. Eta which represent the viscosity of the liquid, where V is the velocity of the liquid which is flowing in a particular tube or liquid, right? Where density, where where V is the velocity, velocity of flow, where this rho which indicates the density, density of a liquid. And this capital D, which indicates diameter, diameter of the particular tube where you are afraid it is flowing over, right? Where eta is represent the coefficient of viscosity, the coefficient of viscosity, right? And by having this particular relation of Reynolds number, the value is like if This particular n r is the value is which is less than one thousand because n r or n r number is the purest or pure number which determines the flow of the liquid or a type of flow of liquid, right? So if this n r is lesser than one thousand value or one thousand number, we can say that the fluid which is flowing in a particular tube which is nothing but streamline flow. This is nothing but a streamlined flow we can have. And similarly, if the fluid is, uh, if this N R is greater than two thousand, if this N R, in the sense of Reynolds number, if it is greater than two thousand number, then we can say the fluid flow is turbulent. What do you mean by turbulent flow? Turbulent flow which is nothing but it is an inorder problem. The in the sense the fluid which is moving up more than a critical value of a particular liquid over here and the thing is if this nr if the value of nr if it is lies in between 1000 to or 2000 if the value of it is uh, lies in between 1000 to 2000 then the fluid is stable or unstable unstable we can say for so this is what exactly we can have uh, under the concept of this reynolds number over here by having the value of uh, reynolds number we will get to know whether a fluid is nr whether fluid is streamlined or a turbulent or unstable okay fine Well, uh, dear students, we will see one more numerical which is based on uh, the theorem which we have discussed. It is the Bernoulli theorem. So, what what is that? The Bernoulli Bernoulli theorem it was the Bernoulli theorem which states that the sum of the sum of potential energy, kinetic energy, and pressure energy for a streamlined flow. Correct. So, that was the basic condition which is given by your uh, Bernoulli. By taking the help of that particular relation, we try to solve one numerical which is there on the board over here. Okay. So let us experiment on a 
model airplane in a wind tunnel, the flow of the upper surface of the upper surface as well as lower surface of the wing. Obviously, whenever we consider an aeroplane, it should have some wing of its own, right? So, when they have kept under the observation of the experiment of this particular model aeroplane under the wind tunnel, what the the upper surface of the wind is experiences a velocity which is around 70 meter per second and the lower surface which can experience around 63 meter per second. According to our observation, whenever we have a greater velocity, whenever we have a greater velocity, there will be a less pressure. Whenever we have a, a low velocity, at that particular instant we can have greater pressure over there, right? So similarly, whenever your aeroplane starts moving somewhat like this, upper surface of the wing experiences a greater velocity, obviously the pressure is less and the bottom surface or a lower surface of the wing can experience a lesser velocity so that it can have a greater pressure so that your aeroplane is going to lift up. Correct? So, what you supposed to find here is that what exactly the lift of the wing if, if, if the area is around 2.5 meter per second meter square and they have given since your aeroplane is moving in a space which is nothing but it can experience a, a air in a sense the density of air is also given as 1.3 kg per meter cube now how, how to solve this kind of numerical let us consider one Bernoulli serum since height is the same over here we can have that is nothing but the B1 that is the half rho V1 square since height remains for time being the height is a constant because we can consider a depth of a lower surface as well as upper surface which is negligible ok so which is equal to we can take a B2 plus half into rho into v2 square why I have not used the rho 1 rho 2 over here because uh, your plane is moving in a space which can experience a density of air that's why density of air for a lower surface as well as upper surface uh, upper surface is going to have a same value that's right ok so let us we will try to find the difference in pressure between upper surface as well as lower surface so we will try to solve it so P2 minus P1 if I do, if I alter the equation which is there on the board. So shift this with respect to P2 minus P1 I can write it as that is nothing but half into rho into I can write that is nothing but V2 square minus V1 square over here. Correct? No? V1 square minus V2 square over here. Now, what is the velocity of the V1 we have? Velocity of the upper surface that is nothing but 70 meter per second square, 70 meter per second, and V2 we have 63 meter per second. Substitute the values over here so that I can have V2 minus V1 which is equal to the half. What is the density of A? That is nothing but 2.5, 2.5, right? Into what is the upper surface of the velocity? Is given as 70 and 63. Substitute over here. 70 in the whole square minus 63 in the whole square. So, if you do the calculation, what value we supposed to get around? We can have 6 point or 605 Newton per meter square. Correct? The pressure is Newton per meter square. Why? Because which is nothing but the pressure we have that is the force per unit area. Force is the Newton area is the meter square. So, that's why force per unit area is a formula of a difference in pressure we can have. Now your job is not a turn over here. Still something is left up. Your job is to find what is the lift of the beam. So we can find lift of the beam. The lift of the wing can be that is nothing but F which is equal to what is the difference in pressure we have? P2 minus P1. P2 minus P1 into the area of cross section of the wing over here. So substitute the values. If I substitute the values, that is the P2 minus P1 can be replaced by 605. 
605.2 into 605.2 into area of cross section is given as how much area of cross section is given as 2.5 meter square this to the values 2.5 meter square if you do you can get around 1.5 into 10 to the power 3 what should be the unit over here obviously since it is a force you can write it as you can and this is the lift is going to have to lift the aeroplane if the velocity on the upper surface is 70 meter per second and if the velocity in the lower surface of the wing is around 63 meter per second okay fine well uh, we will see one more numerical to say on the board that is nothing but in a military oil probe experiment the what is the terminal velocity what do you mean by terminal velocity by the way there is a constant velocity in which the object is moving in a particular liquid okay so the terminal speed of a uncharged drop of radius and the particular object which is having the radius is around the R value is given as 2 into 10 to the power minus 5 meter. Then they have given the density of that object. Okay, that is uh, rho is equal to we have 1.2 into 10 to the power 3 kg per meter cube. Why? Because it is a density. That's why. And they have given you your job is to consider viscosity of the air at the, at the given particular temperature. That is around 1.8, which means viscosity is theta. That is 1.8 into 10 to the power of minus y Pascal seconds. Fine. Then how much is the viscous force on the drop of a particular speed? Okay. So what is the viscous force we are supposed to find? So viscous force is unknown over here. So we know. Our based on our discussion, viscous force formula also we have, and what is the formula we have? It is F C is equal to six by R into eta into V T. Now R is known, eta is in the sense viscosity is given. What is not given over here? They have, they will give V T value, terminal velocity initially is supposed to calculate. What is the formula we have for terminal velocity? Terminal velocity, terminal velocity we have is nothing but 2 r square into rho minus rho dash into g divided by 9 into eta, right? So where rho is the density of what density of the object, and what about is rho dash over here? We can have rho dash is nothing but uh, it is a liquid is going to displace over here, right? So if we do so, what we can have over here? It is nothing but uh, 2 into r square can be replaced by what? R can r can be replaced by what? That is nothing but radius of the square over here. That is nothing but we can have 2 into 10 to the power minus 5 into this rho can be replaced by that is nothing but the density of the liquid over here. Density is nothing but 1.2 into 10 to the power 3 divided by 9 into eta. 9 into eta can be replaced by eta can be replaced by what? Eta is nothing but the viscosity of the fluid over here. Viscosity of the fluid is nothing but 1.8 into 10 to the power 5. All together we are going to have is around 0.08.0.058 meter per second. We are going to have only one point. The terminal velocity we can have, right? And similarly, if we see the the force or viscous force over here, viscous force which is nothing but the six pi into r into eta into v t. You substitute the values. As you know, six pi that is the six into three point one four into radius is given as how much? What is the radius is given over here? That is nothing but two into ten to the power minus five. Two into ten to the power minus five into 
what is the eta value is given? Eta value that is nothing but tau. 1.8 into 10 to the power minus 5 into VT value is nothing but 0 0.058, 0 0.058, which is equal to F for here. Yeah, which is nothing but tau. What is the value we can have? That is 3.93. 3.93 into we can have around 10 to the power minus 10. What would be the estimate for this force over here? Obviously, the force is the Newton over here. So, this is the Newton we can have. So, this is what exactly we can have as a viscous force when during the time of a experiment called as Millikan's drop experiment. Right? Fine. Well, we will see one more miracle which is based on one more uh, topic that is the Bernoulli same once again. So, there is a plane is in a level flight in a constant speed and each of its wing, each of obviously the your, uh, plane should have two wings. So, each of the two wings has an area of cross section that is a 25 meter per second meter square. If speed of a air is around 180 kilometer per hour, on where? On the lower surface and 234 km per hour over the upper surface. So, if it is so, your job is to find what is the mass of the plane. What is the mass of the plane we are supposed to calculate over Okay. So, how to do this? Obviously, we know according to Bernoulli's theorem, since your plane is in a constant uh, height, so that we can have the formula of V1 plus half rho V1 square is equal to V2 plus half rho V2 square since it is maintained in the constant height, height is negligible. Okay. So that let us try to find the difference in pressure V2 minus V1 we can have that is the half into rho of V1 square minus V2 square over here, right? So in the job is to substitute the values which is on the board. Obviously, we know density of the air they are given it as a 1 kg per meter cube and also velocity of the lower surface is given as 180 and upper surface is 234 over here. Substitute the values for here. It is half into rho that is nothing but 1 into V1 can be replaced by how much upper surface that is a 234. So, before that, which is uh, your job is to convert kilometer per hour into meter per second value. How to convert? So that we can have V1 which is equal to what we have 234 into 5 by 18. If you do, you are going to have around 50 meter per second. 50 meter per second. Also, if I do V2 which is equal to 180 into 5 by 18, which is equal to we can have 65 meter per second. Correct? I have substituted the values over here. That is nothing but uh, that is V2 minus V1 difference that is 65 minus 65 whole square minus 50 whole square. Okay? Yeah. So if you do what I can get, that is uh, which is around uh, we can have that is 862, 862.5 Newton per meter square that is nothing but P2 minus P1 difference in pressure we can have. Now your job is to find what, what is the mass. Let us substitute the value which is, the key, which is having a basic formula of pressure. We know F which is equal to that is a P2 minus P1 into they have considered as a two wings. Means one wing has an area of cross section of 25 meters square two wing in, in a sense multiply by two so that we can have 50 over here, right and this f can be replaced by what we know f which is equal to m into g right f which is equal to m in acceleration into gravity now your job is to find the mass of the aeroplane so let us substitute m into g which is equal to p2 minus p1 into that is a area of cross section with respect to m, if I write p2 minus p1, we have a 862, that is 862.5 into a is 50 divided by 
Z that is nothing but the 9.8 if you do so if I multiply all those things we can have the mass which is around 4400 kg okay so this is how exactly we are supposed to get under the concept of uh, Bernoulli's theorem as well as we have discussed about uh, some concept of uh, Stokes law over here and we have got uh, when to say your flow of a liquid is in streamline as well as when to say your fluid is in a turbulent flow by having the relation of Reynolds number. So this is what exactly we can have over here and we will see in the next class. Thank you very much.